been in there for an hour now. And I told him if he wasn't out in two hours, I'd come look for him. I may have to do that. <laughs> well, guys, is anybody here in a hurry? No. no. Now, this is supposed to be a 30-minute tour. But when you roll with me, <laughs> you're looking at about 45. <laughs> Sometimes 50. Because you know what? I like to have a little fun when I take my people in. Because when you spend your mind, you want to have some fun. Yeah. Am I right about it, guys? Yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> guys, welcome to the Beckley Exhibition Coal Mine. My name is Don, and I'm going to be your guide today. I'm the best you got because I'm all you got. <laughs> I'm all you got, guys. Guys, we got some safety rules on the wall right there. Say, stay seated at all times, especially while we are moving. If you stand up while we're moving, you're going to have a bad day because you're going to hit your head on one of these headers in the mine, and you're going to uh, part your hair a little bit different than what it was when you left home today. Change your hair do a little bit, okay? Guys, once we get stopped, if you want to stand up, it's okay to do so at that time. But make sure you look up before you jump up, okay? Because that top is a little higher in some places than it is in other places. So look up before you jump up, okay? Keep your hands and feet inside the rails. Do not put your hands up touch the top. It's mainly for the young kids. They get on here and they want to do the roller coaster thing. <laughs> like they're down at Disney or something. And they, they cut the hands on these roof bolts. They're really sharp. Don't do that, guys. No smoking in the coal mine. No smoking in the coal mine. Wait till you get outside. You can light them up the rest of the day. Got some mining artifacts on this table. When you come back through, if you're interested in anything, look it over, guys. If you want to purchase anything, the price is already tagged on them, what he's asking for. it. About everything on this table right here, I'll be demonstrating on underground today, okay? Mm -hmm. So you'll see how it all works. Guys, uh, has anybody been here before? Uh-oh, we got a few. <laughs> how long ago, guys? 27 years. <laughs> 27 years ago? I Man. wasn't even born then. <laughs> oh, he went around the mountain. No wonder. Well, I need to go and throw this switch back so I won't forget. Now, do you guys want to do that with third one? Up to you, we'll talk about it more when we get underground. What it is is once we get done with the tour, we'll go out the back door and we'll ride around through the park. It's a coal ride. Oh, but if you okay. don't want that coal ride, we'll <laughs> bike right back out of the mines and end up right here. <clears throat> Choice is up to you. But if somebody don't want to go, we won't go. <laughs> if one person say no, oh. then it's no. Okay? <laughs> okay, guys, uh, one other thing. Take all the pictures you want. If you want to tour the coal camp, you go right up the sidewalk. Halfway up, you turn to the left. There is a uh, bachelor shanty up on the hill. Follow that boardwalk and take you around this way, and you'll see the superintendent's house and the schoolhouse. You go that way, there's a three-room family house in the church. Okay? All right. Uh, have you guys heard that song, 16 Ton? Well, let's crank that bad boy up and see what's going on here. Sixteen tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. A St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. All right, coal miners, y'all ready to dig some coal? Hey, what about this one here? Working in the coal mine, going down, down. Now working in the coal mine. Well, get that whoop a little bit louder, guys. We gotta work on that. Okay? Down, down, down in the coal mine. Down, down, down in the coal mine. Here we go, coal miners. Let's go dig some coal, guys. All right, y'all ready to dig some coal? Yeah. Uh, let's go dig it.
stop right here, guys, for a few minutes. Let me pull up just a little bit more. Okay. We're going to stop here for a few minutes, and I'm going to get out, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history of this old coal mine. If I can get this bad boy to sit still, it, it don't like to... It don't like to mind me. It's kind of like my grandson. <laughs> don't like to do what I say. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, guys? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Guys, is everybody okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you get to the point where you are not okay, that's when you need to let me know. Because it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we come in, everything will be good. And then Mr. Claustrophobia goes to show it up. <laughs> and then somebody says, hey! Get me out of here. <laughs> and if that does happen, guys, you say you want to go out, we're going out immediately. No matter where we at, no matter how long we've been in here. If you say you want to go outside, we're going outside right then. Okay? The guys outside to take you in and get you a refund. I'll come back in with whoever wants to come back and we'll finish it up. So you won't be shorted none of your tool if we do go out. Still get the same amount of tool, okay? Okay, guys. Now, right here in my hand. This is our communication to the outside. If anything happens to me while we are in here, don't panic. This is how you communicate with the outside. You hit this little button right here on this side. They can hear you throughout this whole property outside. Everybody can hear you. You call out, you can tell them anything you want. You can say, man, there's something wrong with this dude in here. He's flopping around like a catfish coming to get somebody in here to get us out. I don't care what you tell them, but just tell them you need some help, okay? But you got to remember to tell them where you are. Now, this is stop number two. We're going to leave here. We're going to go to number three. Then we're going to go to number four. When we leave number four, the decision is up to you guys. We can leave and go out the back door. We can ride through the park and come all the way that cold ride back to the, the stopping area, loading area. Or we can leave number four. We can just back up. Within a minute, you'll be outside. So whatever y'all want to do, y'all think about it. We'll do it. You want to stay, get cold, bright, good, freezing, right? You don't want to? You want to. Okay? Okay, guys, let's talk about this old coal mine real quick. This is the Phillips family mine. Phillips family. They owned this mine. They started this mine in 1890. 1890 is when they started it. They mined coal out here until 1910. 20 years they worked in here. This mine was seven miles deep when they stopped working in here. Seven miles. 1910, they shut it down because they ran out of coal, and it stayed idle until 1962. 1962, the city of Beckley purchased it. The first thing they did was bring a company in here to make it higher. And the reason they made it higher, if you look right over here, guys, that's what the whole mines look like height-wise. See over there? See how low that is? The whole mines was that height. Now, right over here where I'm pointing right there, guys, is the top of the coal seam. From there up is all rock, and from there down is coal. Now this coal is in the soil seam, and it's a soft bituminous coal. And the coal in this mine averages about 28 inches, guys. That's what us coal miners call low coal. Now I worked in the coal mine for 23 years. 23 years I worked in the mine. I worked in low coal <laughs> like that for many years, many years. It's no fun, it's no picnic. When you work in low coal, you being over like this, guys, for eight hours. Eight hours, you're like this. You walk around like a duck in that low coal. That's how you have to walk around. Or you do this number, you shuffle to get from point A to point B. It's no fun and it's no picnic. But you do what you got to do. You got this much muddy water on the bottom. I would work eight hours and come outside, and they say, hey, Don, can you give us eight more? <laughs> I'd turn around and go back for eight more. I had two daughters going to college. I need was on me. You ever had I need to get on you? <laughs> when you pull in at the house and them girls come running out, Daddy, I need this and I need that. That's what you call I need. <laughs> I need to just go back to the coal mine. I just go back, brother. I say, let mama handle it. I bring it in, and she would dish it out. But together, we put them girls through college. They got college degrees today, 
and they are travel nurses, travel all over the nation, <laughs> making that paper. One of them just came back from Alaska. $10,000 a week she made. Wow. Cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> I should have said, I need a little bit of that. That's what I should have said. I, I need some of that. But I didn't. I just let her go. I said, I just thank God that she's in a position right now to where she won't be, I need me anymore. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful, and I, I thank God every day for blessing me, to, and enabling me to let them girls get a college degree, get, you know, take care of their families. So it, it's truly a blessing. But anyway, back to this coal mine. Guys, there was no electricity in this mine. When these guys were in here working, there was no electricity in the area, 1890 to 1910. There was no electricity. All the work in this mine was done by hand. These are some of the hand tools these guys used. These tools here. These guys had to buy their own tools from the company store. Everything they owned came from the company store. And that's why they owed their soul to the company store. My dad worked 50 years in the coal mine. 50 years. He owed his soul to the company store, guys. On payday, there was no paycheck. We lived in a big coal camp. This is a little mini coal camp you see out here. We lived in a big coal camp. Hundreds of people. Poor people. The reason we were poor, guys, is because there was no money. On payday, there was no paychecks. There was no money. They worked, but they didn't get paid because they owed their soul to the company store. And we'll talk more about it at the next stop. But we had hand-me-down clothes. It's the truth. Hand-me-down clothes. My brothers had to wore the jeans out time they got the media wore out. And today, these young ladies will go out here and pay $100 yeah. for a pair of jeans with holes in them all the way down. <laughs> Talk to me, ladies. Tell the truth. Am I right about it? Tell the truth. $100 jeans with holes in all that. $100 jeans. All of mine had holes in them. I should have kept them bad boys. <laughs> that had been worth some money. Hey, guys, right here. This is a ton of coal. One ton. Now, these miners were expected to come in here and load 10 tons every day, each miner. 10 tons of coal every day with a pick and shovel now. No machinery, no electricity. 10 tons a day, they got paid 20 cents a ton. 20 cents a ton. And look over here. You see rock mixed in with the coal? If you're seeing rock outside mixed in with the coal, they deduct it from your pay. Instead of you getting 20 cents a ton, you may only get 10 or 15 cents because you got rock mixed in with it. Right here, guys, fire boss. Fire boss is the person that comes into the mine and inspects the mine before anybody comes in. This mine is inspected every morning. 8.30 every morning, one of us tour guides walk this mine down. We don't ride through. We walk it every day. 8.30 every morning, one of us is in here walking this mine down. Okay? Tomorrow morning, it's my turn. Guys, it takes about 35 minutes to walk this mine down. You have to take about 15 different locations. You date up, and you put your initials there, showing that you was there. Right here is the old school telephone. This is the type phone we had in the mines when I first started back in the 70s. You push that button right there and you can talk to the man on the outside for whatever needs you got. Today, this is your communication device. This, everybody walks around with these in case you need something outside. Call out. Right here, guys, somebody in here knows exactly what this is. It is a bird cage. What kind of bird? Canary. Canary, guys. The canary in the coal mine. The coal miners used the canary for a gas detector, guys. Gas detector. The gas I'm talking about is methane gas. Methane is a deadly gas found in most coal mines. Most coal mines. No gas in this coal mine, guys. You don't have to worry. Now, methane is a heavy gas. It lays close to the bottom, so therefore you would put your canary down here on the bottom. The miner would be here digging his coal. Monitor that canary throughout the day. As long as that canary was singing and dancing, life was good in the coal mine.
But if you look over there in the canary that rolled over on his back and got his feet up in the air, he's letting you know that it's time to go. Because if you don't go, you're going to be laying on your back with your feet in the air. This was their lifeline, guys. Saved a lot of miners' lives. Guys, like I said, 1890 to 1910, there was no electricity in this mine. This was the only light they had. It's called a teapot light. Flip your lid, put your kerosene in here, light your wick, and you stick this on your hat. It's all the light you had. It's all you had. And you had to buy your own kerosene for your light. You had to buy your own. Okay? Where would you buy that at? The company store. The company store. Guys, I'm sure that you guys probably saw this light right here outside on the table. Of course, it wasn't lit up. This is called, coal miners call them a possum light, but it's a flame safety light. These are obsolete. They don't use these anymore in the coal mine. But this was to de detect gas in the coal mine. This is how you detect the gas. You'd hold it all the way up the top, but you would very slowly, much slower than what I'm going, very slowly you would lower it to the bottom. If there was gas in the mines, it would be down low. When you get down low, if that flame starts to shoot up, you know that you got methane in the coal mine. Of course, you had, your, you had your canary also to let you know. But that's what this is. We have these lights outside. It uses regular Coleman fuel. He has these lights outside for sale also. Now, guys, they came out with another light, and that's this light right here. i got to add a little bit more carbide to it because I can see it looks a little weak. But this light here is called the carbide light. The carbide light. Now... This carbide light, me and it don't get along too well. I think we just alike. Don't either one of us like to work. But we're going to see what happens. You guys want to see some magic? Oh, yeah. Now, if I make this happen, I want to hear you guys say, you the man. <laughs> okay? I want to hear it, you the man. Now, guys, this carbide light, you have carbide in this section, water in this section. Now, you mix the water with the carbide. And gas will start flowing up out of there. When the gas starts flowing, you hit this little flint, you get a spark. The spark meets the gas, you get a flame. So that's what we want is the flame, okay? So we start out with water, guys. Let's see what we got. We got some water. We got, we got uh, gas. Now all I need to do is get a spark. If I get a spark, I want to hear you guys talk to me, somebody. You the man. You the man. Talk to me. Man, but I'll do it till get here. <laughs> All right, guys. This is the carbide light. Carbide light. We have these out on the table also. Now, I want to turn out the lights, and I want you guys to see exactly how it looked in here when the miners were in here working. This is exactly how it looked, guys. When they had this light on their head, this is exactly how it looked when they were in here working. Hard to believe, isn't it? It is. Now, one man in each place working. You would be here by yourself. Next closest person would be 50, 75 feet away. Okay? This light will last four to five hours. Then you got to yell at one of your buddies, hey, come and shine a light for me to fill up. And this is exactly how it would look. You would be in here by yourself. And this is exactly what it looked like. Now, you see why it's easy to get rock mixed in with your gold. Mm -hmm. It's all the light you had. Now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like if your light go out. Check this out. That's what it looks like in the mine if your light goes out, guys. Pretty dark in the coal mine when your light go out. Now, you guys want to go dig some coal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that didn't sound too good. I said, do you guys want to dig some coal? Yeah. Yeah. All right, but before we do, guys, I'm going to tell you a quick little, a quick little story. Well, it's more of a little saying that they have in the coal mine. And the saying goes like this, guys. If your light goes out in the coal mine, that means your wife is cheating on you. That's what she means. <laughs> <laughs> now, the old timers don't pay no attention to it. If their light go out, no problem. They get on the phone and they call out and tell them to send them another light. But the young boys, 
These young guys, when their light go out, the old timers go to riding them. Oh boy, oh boy, the boyfriend's at the house today, and Jody's at the house today, and the dimmer that light gets, the more they light in on him, and the more they light in on him, the more worried he's getting, and before long, that light goes out, and he's going to the house, check things out. Hey, about three weeks ago, I told that story, and I get in the ride, and we go around to the next stop, I've been here six years. I get out, of the, get out of the ride and go to talking, my light goes out. Uh-oh. And I kept a clicking that bad boy, and I was saying, please, baby, come back on. But it would not come on. And there was a lady sitting right on that corner there, and she said, boy, if I was you, I'd be going home. She said, you got something going on at your house. I said, I ain't going to worry about it. I'm old school, brother. I don't worry about it. Because ain't nothing you can do about it, no way. Amen, brother. Amen. Am I right about it, brother? Amen. Hey, working in the coal mine, going downtown. Working in the coal mine. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, man, that whoop is weak. The whoop is weak in here today, guys. Come on, let's crank it up a little bit. Working in the coal mine, going downtown. Now working in the coal mine. Whoop, whoop. All right. I'm about to slip down. Five o'clock in the morning. I'm already up and gone. Lord, I'm so tired. How long can this go on? Hey, we're in the cold mine. We're in the cold mine. They've been doing it like this since 1962. I don't think I can change it any. <laughs> Amen, somebody? <laughs> Amen. Tell them, miss, if you would, that it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Did y'all hear her? She said it is what it is. The other day I come in, there was a young lady here. She's about 10 years old. And I says, miss, would you please tell them that it is what it is? She said, that's your job. <laughs> I said, middle school, middle school. We get them middle schoolers in here, boy, they off the chain. The elementary kids are great, man. The high school kids are great. But, boy, you get them middle schoolers, they off the chain, man. Hey, guys, the miners come in here, the first thing they have to do is they have to get what they call the undercut. The undercut is this area under the bottom here. He has to dig that out, guys. The miner comes in here. The top would only be this high, guys. 
He's laying down in the mud and water. There wouldn't be no gravel here. It'd be mud and water. And he's got to dig that bottom coal, eight to ten foot wide, four foot deep under that bottom to get his undercut, okay? Then he takes this coal drill, four foot coal drill. He lays down in the mud and water and he drills three holes, four foot deep. Three holes, four foot deep. After he drilled those three holes, guys, he put black powder in those holes. Black powder. Well, after the black powder comes clay dummies. He put the clay dummies in there. Then he takes these tamping rods over here and he packs it real tight. This tamping rod. He used this big end and he packs it real tight. He takes this pointed end and he pokes a hole in it. Once he gets his hole in there, he puts a fuse in it. He runs that fuse all the way around the corner. Now, before he light that fuse, he has to warn his co-workers that he's getting ready to let off a shot. So he comes out here and he yells, fire, 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 fire in the hole, fire in the hole. He gets around the corner and he lights that fuse. Boom! He shoots that coal. That coal falls down. You see, the reason why you dig that bottom out first is so that when you shoot the coal, the coal has somewhere to fall. That's why you dig the bottom out first. Now, when the coal falls down, rock falls down also. Now, you know what happens if you're seeing rock outside mixed in with the coal? You lose money. They're going to deduct it from your pay. So therefore, you got to hand pick all the rock out of the coal before you load it out. Once you pick the rock out, you've got to get this bad boy. I hated this day when I worked in the mine because it'll wear you out, brother. These miners had to load 10 tons of coal every day. 10 tons with a shovel, guys. Can you imagine loading 10 tons every day? You been over and you got to load 10 tons of coal every day with a shovel. And guess what? It's payday at the coal mine. And guess what, guys? There's no paycheck. No paycheck on payday. Now, what would you do on payday if there's no paycheck? Somebody ready to go off. <laughs> Am I right about it? You're right. These guys, they knew that on payday there would be no paycheck. And the reason there was no paycheck is because they owed their soul to the company store. Mm. My dad owed his soul to the company store, guys. I told you guys we were poor when I was raised up. I was poor. We weren't poor. Who We was just po. P-O. Po <laughs> folks. We couldn't even afford the old heart, brother. We were po. We were po. That's the truth. We were po. But the reason why we were po is because there was no money. None. On payday, there was no paycheck, guys. And the reason there was no paycheck is because my dad, all the other men, they owed their soul to the company store. Now, what does that mean? Check this out, guys. You go outside, you're going to see a three-room family house that's owned by the company. We lived in a four-room company house. When you stay in that company house, you got to pay rent. You got to pay to stay. It was eight of us, eight kids, mom and dad. In a full room company house. No running water, no indoor bathroom. That's what we had, guys. But you got to pay rent to stay in that company house. They take that rent right out of your paycheck. The coal that comes out of this mine, that's what heats that house that you're staying in. You got to pay for that coal, and they take it out of your paycheck. Your kids get sick, they take them to the company doctor. You got to pay that doctor, they take it out of your paycheck. Your, your food and your clothing, you go to the company store, they take it out of your paycheck. Deduction after deduction after deduction after deduction coming out of that check. There's nothing left. There's nothing left, guys. You owe the company more than the company owe you. They take out what you owe them first. And they leave you nada, not a penny. 
Nothing. So on payday, there's no paycheck. You owe your soul to the company store. And that's why we were po. There was no money. It's a fight, guys. There was no money. You can go to the company store and get anything you want. But the price is jacked up three times higher than what it should be. But you have no choice than to buy it because you got no money. And the more you buy it, you go to that company store, the deeper and deeper and deeper in debt that you get and you never get out. You owe your soul to the company store. And that's the way it was. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. But that's the way it was in the coal camp. People say, why wouldn't they just move? Why wouldn't they just leave and go somewhere else? Well, I'm going to tell you why, guys. My dad had eight kids. No money. No car. Where are you going to go? How are you going to go? You're going to go back to that coal mine. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to support your family. And that's what those men did. They worked knowing that they weren't going to get paid. Because they owed their soul to the company store. That's the way it was. And then listen at this part, guys. If dad happens to pass away for whatever reason, the son, if he's 12 years old, he has to come into mine and take dad's place in order for the rest of the family to continue living in the company house. Somebody has to work for the company. So the son comes into mine and he takes dad's place, 12 years old or older. Not only did he take dad's place in the mind, but that debt that dad left behind, it now belonged to the son. He's 12 years old and he owe his soul to the company store. That's the way it was. It wasn't fair, it wasn't right, but that's the whole way it was, guys. And mom and the girls, if you didn't have a son 12 years old, mom and the girls, they kick you out of the company house. They give you three days to pack it up and move it out. And they didn't care where you go. But you can't stay here. That's the way it was, guys. But let me tell you this. In the coal camp, po folks, my family included, Stuck together like glue. They took care of each other. If you needed some sugar, you knocked on your neighbor's door. You say, I need a cup of sugar. Bread, butter, milk, or flour, you knock on your neighbor's door. If they got it, you got it. That's the way it was in the cold camp where I'm from, guys. Whole folks stuck together and they took care of each other. The men worked the coal mine. The women ran the coal camp. The kids get out here and go to showing out a little bit. One of them women would jerk a limb off of a tree and wear you out, and they didn't care whose kids you were. <laughs> Everybody whooped. All those women whooped each other's kids. They'd whoop you and send you home. Say, go home, tell your mama I whooped your butt. And you got another one when you got home. <laughs> You would beg them, please don't tell mama. Please don't tell mama. Because mama didn't play. That's the way it was in the cold camp, guys. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. But that's the way it was. We were po. You know, my daughters come home on the holidays, and I, I get them going every time. They fall for it every time. I said, let's talk about the good old days. And my daughters just say, oh, dad, please. <laughs> From what I understand, they weren't very good. I don't know why you call them good old days. They weren't very good. I said, well, I thought they was pretty good. We had some fun times. How can they be good when you're po? You was po, mom was po, everybody in the family was po back then. We didn't know we were po. That was the difference. We didn't know we was po. We thought everybody lived like we live. We didn't know no different. That's the way it was. But everybody took care of each other. And everybody was the same. Everybody was treated equal. It wasn't no one person over here with like they got today, $300 tennis shoes on, and this one got on $29.99. It wasn't like that. 
Everybody was poor, you was equal. Wasn't no keeping up with the Joneses, because the Joneses was poor too. <laughs> Everybody was poor. We didn't know we was poor, guys. We made our own toys. Dad would bring a grease bucket home, five-gallon grease bucket home, and we would cut the bottom out. You throw some newspaper in there, you light it, it would melt all that grease from around the side. You nail that bad boy to a tree, and you shot basketball on that bad boy. That's what we did. You jerk a limb over the tree and you shave it down, make you a baseball bat and wrap newspaper up and wrap some tape around. That was your baseball. That's what we, we played baseball with. Just as good as Walmart. That's what we had back in the day. I wouldn't take nothing for it. I'd go back to it in a heartbeat. You went outside to use the bathroom. I tell my daughter, said, oh, daddy, please don't tell me no more. <laughs> they can't stand to even hear it. What did you do in the wintertime? You went in the wintertime the same way you do in the summertime. <laughs> just a lot quicker. Hey, man, just a lot quicker. That's right. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, guys, back to the coal mine. This equipment that you see, guys, was never used in this coal mine because this coal mine never had any electricity, remember? Now, they came out with this machine here. It's called an electric punch machine. It replaced that hand drill. And then they came out with that Jeffrey loading machine over there, that yellow machine you see over there. That Jeffrey loading machine would come in here after, the, after you shot that coal down. He would come in here and he would scoop that coal from the bottom. He would pull it up to the top of that machine. The top of the machine had a conveyor chain. A conveyor chain would spit that coal right into the coal cars. I showed you guys a replica. Some of you saw that replica of the, the mule team. Mules and ponies would pull that coal outside the mine. That's how they got the coal from the inside the mine to the outside. Guys, if you look over the top of your head, you see these old rusty plates. These are called roof bolts. Roof bolts. That's what's used to keep the top from falling in. Back during these days, they used timbers. These wooden posts you see here, these are called timbers, and this is the way timbers look in the coal mine today. Back during these days, guys, they were just a round timber. They weren't square cut. They was round. They still had the bark on them. After this coal is all gone, that Jeffrey loading machine that took that coal out, you would put those timbers up under that rock on each side, two to four foot apart. That's what would keep the top from falling. But after years and years, it got to be too much weight for those timbers to hold that top up, and the top started to fall in. And that's when they came out with these things here called roof bolts. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to show you all how they put those up. And then we go into the coal miner's lounge. Wake up in here, coal miners. Wake up. <laughs> Working in the coal mine. Going down, down, and working in the coal mine. Working in the coal mine. Whoop, whoop. I'm about to slip down. Five o'clock in the morning. I'm already up and gone. Hey, guys, take all the pictures you want. If you need me to stop or back up, I will be glad to do so, Okay. One more stop, guys. We're going to number four. One more stop. Here we go. Down, down, down. call me hen pecked. They say you hen pecked. I said no, I'm not hen pecked. I just got hen house ways. <laughs> Come say what you want. But a happy wife is a happy life. Uh -huh. I don't care what they say, guys. My pastor say you can either be right or you can be happy. <laughs> be happy. So I don't care what my buddies say. I got to live at that house. I want to be happy. So you young guys remember that. Hey, just be happy. You don't have to be right. Just be happy. Okay? Don't waste years of your life like I did. It took me a long time to learn. I wish I'd learned it a long time ago, but I know now. Guys, this, see this machine back here called a Goodman cutting machine? That big yellow machine looked like a big chainsaw. 
Those guys used to have to lay down in the mud and water and dig that coal. They don't have to do that anymore. You got a machine here called a Goodman cutting machine. We'll cut that out about 10 foot. And then they got an eight foot drill here that will cut, cut that bottom coal out eight to 10 foot. Look over the top of your head. You see these, these things, that rust, rusty plates up in the rooftop? These are called roof bolts, guys. This is what keeps the top from falling in. Those are put up by this machine right here, and it's called a roof bolter. The roof bolter operator, in my opinion only, he's the most important man in the coal mine because he's the man that keeps this top from falling on your head. I think that's pretty important. He starts out, guys, with a piece of drill steel, exactly like this, but four foot long, four foot long. He would put it on that head. That head raises up to the top. When you raise it to the top, you drill a hole in that rooftop four foot deep, four foot. After you drill that hole, you take a tube of glue. That's a tube of resin glue. You take that tube of glue and you just slide that tube of glue up in the hole just like that. You still holding that tube of glue in the hole, guys, and you reach and get this roof bolt and you push that tube of glue further up in the hole. You get right here and that machine will spin it really fast. 15 seconds he spins it. When he's spinning it, he's busting open that tube of glue and he's mixing the glue for 15 seconds. Then he presses it against the top and he holds it for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, guys, this is what you got. See those plates up in the rooftop? It's this right here. This right here is what you're looking at. And it's called a roof bolt. This is what keeps the top from falling in, guys. It's glued to the top. You got layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of rock. When you put that glue in there, it gets in between all those layers, and it glues all of those layers together throughout this mine. Thousands and thousands of roof bolts throughout this coal mine. And they're all got that glue in them, and you got all of this top is glued together. That's what keeps it from falling. It's glued together, guys. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the guys, those are put up on a pattern. I know it looked like they're everywhere up there, but this is why. Four by four, the state and the federal law says four by four. And what that means is every four foot going across, you have to have at least one. Every four foot. Every four foot going this direction, you have to have at least one. The walls, side in the coal mine is called the rib, R-I-B, rib. From the rib, four foot, you put up a roof bolt, four foot, every four foot. Four foot from this one, you put up another, four foot, another, four foot, another. All the way across, every four foot, same thing going this direction. If you got one here, four foot, you put up another one. Four foot from this one, another. Four foot from that one, another. Then you can add as many extras as you want. You can put them up everywhere. But you must have at least one every four foot. But you can put up as many as you want. Minimum one every four foot. No maximum amount. You can put up as many as you want, okay? Guys, look right here as we finish up. This round ball and this round ball, these are called sulfur balls. Sulfur balls, okay? Sulfur balls are found in the coal mine. Very seldom found they worthless. When you find them, you kick them to the side. People take them and paint them and put them out in their yard, use them for our yard ornaments. But right here, guys, kettle bottom. This one, this one, and this one, these three are kettle bottoms. Kettle bottoms are petrified tree stumps. Petrified tree stumps. Extremely heavy. We have one out in the waiting area out there where we load it up in the loading area, really. These right here, that one, that one, that one. These three are kettle bottoms. Petrified tree stumps, guys. Extremely heavy, extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous, guys. These has taken on many men's lives. They are found in the roof of the coal mine, guys. That's where you find them. Now, just like a leaf or an apple will eventually fall off of a tree, nobody knows when, but it's going to eventually fall that kettle bottom is eventually going to fall out of that top. And if you happen to be standing underneath one of them when they fall, you've had a bad day. You can turn out the lights. The party is over. These right here, one of these fall on you, 
You won't be at Christmas dinner. Party over, guys. And if you go up into the Coal Miners Museum over top of the, where you got your ticket, you'll see these up there in the museum, Kettle Bottoms. They have a nickname, guys. The nickname for these, Widowmaker. The Widowmaker. Go figure. The Widowmaker. These fall on you, party over. Okay? Kettle bottom. Bad news, guys. Guys, right here where we're sitting, you got about 100 to 150 feet of mountain over the top of your head right now. 100 to 150 feet of mountain over your head. And this tour is approximately 1,500 feet you're going to travel today. If someone asks you how far in the mine did you go, approximately 1,500 feet. Okay, we got one more thing to talk about, and that's the dinner bucket and the coal miner's lounge. The dinner bucket, guys, most coal miners carry metal dinner buckets to work. Metal dinner buckets. And the reason they carry metal dinner buckets, guys, is to keep the rats from eating their lunch. That's the truth. Keep the rats from eating their lunch. Most coal mines are full of rats, guys. The last mines I worked in, I was 22 miles underground. 22 miles. It takes an hour ride. From the time we leave, you keep going for 22 miles. Take about one hour to get to your working area. But when you get there, the rats welcome you home. They everywhere. <laughs> Big rats, guys. Big rats. But we only have one rat in this coal mine. Only one. And he's right here, guys. This is the only rat that we got. Oh. <laughs> he come from Walmart. <laughs> this is the only rat in this coal mine. The reason there are no rats in this mine, guys, is because there's no food. Nothing for them to eat in here. So that's why we don't have rats, okay? Rats, coal miners feed the rats because the rats will save your life. The old miners tell you to feed the rats. Guys, if you're working right here and the tops start to fall up there, the rats will come boogieing down through here. If they smell smoke or fire up there, the rats will come boogieing down through here. When you see rats boogieing in the mine, you boogie with them. They'll save your life. Because rats will leave danger and they will go to where it's safe. Every time. And that's why the miners feed the rats. Because the rats will save your life. He knows something that you don't know. He can hear that top before it falls. And when you see them rats boogieing, you better boogie with them because something's getting ready to happen. Guys, the miners come to the coal miners' lounge to eat their lunch. Right over there is the coal miners' lounge. It's better known as the dinner hole. The dinner hole. Coal miners will come down here. It might be 10 of them over in the dinner hall eating their lunch. They take the lids off the dinner bucket. You're going to hear that noise. You got 10 of them opening up the dinner bucket. When the rats hear that noise, here they come. <laughs> they know what time it is. They know it's dinner time, buddy. So you sitting over there and the rat sitting right here looking at you like he had Applebee's or Chili's or the Texas Roadhouse, bro. He ready to eat. So... You have to break off a piece of sandwich, cakes, cookies, donuts. You have to throw it over here and feed the rats in order for you to be able to eat without the rats. If you don't feed them, they're going to come over and sit on your lap <laughs> trying to get a bite of your sandwich. So you feed the rats. While they eat, you eat. And that's every day, guys. The day she feeds them, the evening she feeds them, the midnight she feeds them. The rats eat three meals a day. You wonder why they get big? They eat good. <laughs> they do. They eat good. That's why you got big rats in the gold mine. But they harmless. They don't bother you. Guys, the miners take the lid off their dinner bucket. The first thing you're going to see is this pan. It's called the goody pan. Most miners call it the pie pan because that's where mama put the good stuff. A piece of pie, a piece of cake, cinnamon rolls, brownies, fudge. You know them fried pies mama makes? goes in the goodie pan. You don't never let your co-worker see what you got in your goodie pan if you want to eat it. Right here, she'd pack you a couple of sandwiches, maybe something left over from dinner, a piece of fruit, maybe some snacks. This bottom section is where the mine occurs is drinking water, guys. About a gallon of water from here down. They drink it right out of the bucket. These guys was responsible for their own water. Today in the coal mine, it's cases and cases of bottled water everywhere. The company pays for it. But back in these days, your dinner bucket would be parked there, and you would be working up there. Say your buddy working right here, but your buddy, he'd have been out at the bar all night. He's all dehydrated today. He didn't already drink all of his water. What do you think he's going to do now? 
fire off. He's going to drink yours. That's exactly what he's going to do. So they had to come up with some kind of an idea. How are you going to keep guys from drinking your water? And this is what they came up with, guys. What do you think? Would you take a drink out of that, guys? No. Huh? Ooh. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Would you take a drink out of that, guys? Huh? What do you think? That's what they did to keep guys from drinking their water. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Would you take a drink out of it? Most people say there ain't no way, but I'm going to tell you something, guys. You're really thirsty. You're going to drink this water. I'm telling you. It just depends on how thirsty you are. I know I'm going to drink it myself. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. First thing I'm going to do is reach in and pull them teeth out. They got to go. Because I don't think I can drink it and look at them teeth at the same time. But I'm going to take them teeth out. I'm going to throw me up a little blessing over them. And then I'm going to drink that water. Most of you are going to drink it too. It just depends on how thirsty you are. Guys, I got to get you outside. It's been 50 minutes. This is supposed to be a 30 minute tour. That's what great. happened to Gilligan, the Gilligan's Island, was it? It's been a three hour tour. Oh, Gilligan's wife, her name is Dreamer Denver. Gilligan's name was, was Bob Denver. His wife, her name is Dreamer, she comes out here. I've got pictures with her. She loved me to death. She's a good, die hard person, just as nice as she can be. That's Gilligan's wife. She lives up here in Princeton, West Virginia. You guys ever heard of Toby Mac? Yeah. Yes. Toby Mac came in his mind and did a video with us. He made it here. If you go to YouTube, you go to go on YouTube and go to Toby Mac, The Promised Land. It was made right here in this coal mine. He is, man, diehard. I mean, he's just a down-to-earth guy, man. We broke bread. He stayed here two days with us. We broke bread outside. Laughed and carried on. He just wanted to sit down and talk about your families, how everything's going. Down to earth guy. I became a number one fan of his after meeting him. Didn't even know who he was till he came here. Yo Yo Ma. You ever heard of Yo Yo Ma? <laughs> Yo Yo Ma was here a week ago. He didn't come to this mine, but he wanted to meet some coal miners. So we went down on the river and we met him down on the river. He played his cello. World's most famous cello player. He played for the queen. He played for several presidents. He sit down and broke bread with coal miners down here on the river. We was down there with him. Real nice guy, super nice guy. He just wanted to talk to some coal miners and sing, play his music with some coal miners. Had a good time. Guys, when you go back outside, make sure you tour these houses. There's something to see. You're going to be really happy that you did if you go out here and tour these houses. I know it's cold, but you paid your money for them. You are not already paid for them. You might as well see them. Okay? <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. I'm sorry. I apologize for taking so long, but I know when you spend your mind, you want to have some fun. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, about you? Amen. <laughs> guys, hey, one more thing before we go. Now, we can go around that corner, and we're going to be just about outside. Or we can go this way, and we have a long ride going around the mountain. Now, what do you guys want to do? Long ride. Sir, don't answer me. I don't like cold weather. I don't either. But I want to satisfy you guys. Is there anybody that don't want to go around the mountain? I want you to say yes if you don't want to go. Anybody that don't want to go around the mountain? I know there's somebody here that don't want to go around the mountain. I say, who is it that don't want to go? You know. <laughs> Sounds like it's me, don't it? <laughs> well, guys, guess what? We're going around We're the mountain. Yeah. We're going around the mountain. Thank you guys for coming. I hope y'all had fun. Yeah. We're working in the coal mine, going downtown. Now we're working in the coal mine. Woo! I'm about to slip down. Okay, 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm already up and gone. Lord, I'm so tired, I'm on, can't this go on? Hey, we're going around the mountain, guys, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up, hug up, do whatever you got to do to stay warm. Here we go, guys.
mountain or not? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, good. Good deal. Everybody happy. That's all that matters. Guys, we're going to unload right here, guys. You guys on the bike side, you can go ahead and open up your gate.